the line and the line. Um, sometimes they uh, go directly. I'm drawing a blank right now. But sometimes they'll place lines Center at bedside, line. center line, A line. The idea behind it is it has to be done in a sterile setting. Um, so we know that you can't. Sterile means that it's free of any pathogens. Uh, when you select any item, you're checking to make sure the contents of the package hasn't been the integrity is good and that there's no holes, tears, or rips. Uh, the next thing you're going to want to need to know is do you need to do an open glove setup or a closed glove setup? So if you're doing a central line, that would be a closed glove setup. And that means you're going to be wearing a gown and gloves. Okay, so you want to set up a separate area for that. And the reason for that is, is you have to keep the content sterile, so you need a place to set up at. So I normally, first things first, what you want to do is perform hand hygiene. Okay, so I recommend doing a hand wash instead of just going to the wall. So if you have a sink around, <coughs> hand wash. Do the real hand wash, and I will right before I put on my gown and gloves, because when you go to scrub in for this, you want to use some kind of an Avogard, a dry prep to your hand, okay? So the first thing, I select my supplies, I make sure you put your mask on, and so, and then have gown and gloves ready. We also look like we have arterial catheter, uh, angiocap, some extra towel drapes, and you're gonna need to prep the patient, okay? So first thing you'll wanna do, perform your hand hygiene, and then you would start your prep. Use this part of the arm. Um, different types of preps that you'll see out there. Some of the nice ones are these automatic. You just pop it and prep. Okay, and it's out. Out and around. Like a circle. You never want to prep out and then go back in because you're taking contamination back into the wound. So that's first. For here on this Provodyne iodine swab, you just tear the top and there's swabs in here. There's three of them. You want to use everything in the packet. So you would start with the one, start at the incision or at, I'm sorry, at the puncture mark. 10 swipes, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and out and around. And throw that tab away. Take your next one. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, out and away. Toss that, and then the final third swab. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, out and away. And their arm will be dyed. If you guys haven't used this before, it's going to leave a color. You'll be able to see on the skin if any of the iodine has been prepped out. You want to allow it to dry. Okay. The whole point in prepping the skin is you cannot remove all pathogens but you want to get as many of the bugs off of there as possible. So allowing it to dry is good, okay? Some people will do other things, but you just let it air dry and go and set up your sterile field. If you just look at gowns and packages, it usually tells you how to open it, so you just tear along the perforation. This is called a dust cover. This part is just to hold the contents in the pack. You can throw that away. Now, the part of the package you don't want to mess up is the outside here. You want to set it on a flat surface with, it's like an envelope. So there's a tab. That first tab goes out and away from you. So I normally set it on a flat surface and open the tab out and away. There will be a tab on each side of these and it shows in the picture. You just find the side of the tab. If it starts to move around, I just touch the outside of the package is the only part you can touch. I cannot reach in to the inside of this and touch, otherwise it's contaminated and you have to get a new one. Okay, so just opening the edge. Sometimes you have to do these in a hurry and they start flopping in. You wanna make sure those edges lay flat and that you've created a barrier so you can open other supplies onto. So for instance, if I were setting up, I would open the remainder, the contents, everything that I needed to use somewhere within this package, okay? So, that when it's time to get in glove, you only have limited space usually when you're setting up for A-lines. And you go to open a package, find the tab, pull back, be really careful, and just drop it on. You consider one inch around the package contaminated, so 
anywhere in here, I would not consider sterile on those edges. I have my supplies selected, could possibly open some extra drapes. I do need a fenestrated drape for this purpose, so I want to make sure I get that onto my sterile field. The idea is if you don't get your supplies onto your sterile field, somebody else is going to have to help you because you'll be sterile and you can't touch anything. So always make sure you have all your supplies ready and open. Pick the side where it's not going to be in the way of you grabbing your gown. And if you notice, most things in the hospital are on wheels. So if you need to move things around, don't be afraid to do that as well. You will want to open for closed glove technique. You have to open your gloves onto the sterile field. That's the difference between open and closed. Okay. <laughs> for here, if you question it, you just pick it up, take it away. Okay. I'm one of those when in doubt, you just get a new one because it causes infection when we go. Okay. So next thing that I would do is perform a hand hygiene. In your case, it's probably going to be an Avogard that you're going to do a sterile scrub. Some other places would have you do a time scrub because you're gowning up. For an arterial line, they just go in and use fingers. Get those nice, dip your fingers in it. This is not the normal Avogard we have, but it'll work. And then what you're doing is you are prepping the skin of your arms up into the elbow so that you can Dawn your sterile gown. So from here, you normally, you don't usually have somebody spin you, right? For the gown? We're gonna show them how to do that. Perfect. Yes. So from here, you will need someone to tie you up. So I'm gonna have Mrs. Foss come behind me once I get this gown. And tie her up. And tie me up. <laughs> so the idea is when you go to grab your gown, you guys really slow, because if anything falls off, it's no longer sterile. Okay, so sometimes if things are in the way, I just move out of the way, open the gown, let the front of it fall forward and swim into it and just wait. Your nurse or somebody will come by and tie the back of your gown. So what she's doing is taking the Velcro pieces at the top. She will Velcro. There's a tie on my left hip and there's a tie on my inside right hip. So she has to reach inside that gown, tie those two together, and then I can approach my sterile field. Once that's done, hold on, sorry, <laughs> I don't know why I was having trouble. Keep my distance from everything so I can get gloved up. The idea is your hands are not allowed to come out of the cuff. They should stay below the cuff, but you do have to prepare your gloves. <laughs> so this is the fun part. Yeah, so we'll, we'll do the last part when she's oh, done. Oh. So opening up a package when you're close gloving, does it matter how the package opens? You just need to get to your glove because all the contents right here are sterile. Close glove. I call this the lobster claw. I just get my two little fingers there. Pinch, pinch the edge of the, gown, the glove in here and it's thumb to thumb. I'll walk over here so you guys can see. I'm pulling this edge, pointed the glove to my thumb. My thumb is here. I can use those right there. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So if you mess up, the best thing is, is if people know how to open sterilely, they, can you open that side? It doesn't have to be back in sterile. That's sterile. The inside sterile. Yeah. Inside sterile. So from here, thumb to thumb, pull out up and around and you kind of have to force your hand See, much better than I did. <laughs> in. now your all your fingers don't always go in perfectly the first time it's okay you can still glove your next hand thumb to thumb I just find my thumb create a little place to pull up and out and it does get caught and then from here I just pull up on my gown sleeve and you will adjust your gloves as needed. So I picked the wrong size today, so it's going on a little bit tight. And just straighten your gloves up. It always looks and feels silly, like somebody's is not straightening things up. It takes you a minute to get your fingers out. It's okay, all right? You guys, it'll look silly every single time. Once your fingers and your hands are within the glove, you're sterile from here to here, and from your nipples down to your pubis. Okay, to thin the gown. 
what you would do is normally your nurse would be close by on the front of your gown. There's a card. The blue is for me, the white is for her, and it even says assistant graph here. So I know I can touch the blue. I take and hold the tie on my left side, and I pass the turn card to the assistant, and she's going to walk around and hand me that tie. Now, for this instance, she would just pull that tab off and pull it away because I don't want the tab or the paper back. And then you just tie yourself in. I'm sterile. I can walk up to anything sterile, and now I can pre prepare my sterile field on the patient. These, if you ever have little pieces of paper and stuff in the way, just work around it. The idea is that I don't touch non-sterile. So this is a fenestrated drape. Fenestration means there's a hole in it. So you just find your drape. Open the hole. Open the drape up. Tuck your edges of your hand and place it over the area you're working on. So from here, this area I can work at safely. Okay. Then you're going to select whatever supplies you're using. And you can either move it to the drape or close by and work with your supplies from here. That is your closed glove technique for gowning and gloving. Okay? Does anybody have any questions? Mm -hmm. Okay. Glove, which is usually just putting in an A-line. Um, this is more for central line when you gown and glove. To get out of your gown, the way you break it away safely is the side tab, you just pop it and then pull on the back of your gown, break it away at the shoulders, pull down in front and you're rolling the gown away from your body. And from here you take the gown, throw that away and then it's glove to glove, skin to skin to take that off and then all that goes in the trash, okay? <clears throat> That was, again, the closed glove technique. So I'm just gonna move my supplies as if we just... Some hospitals just have a little steri drape, and it says sterile drape. You open the sterile drape, set it over here, and it's the same idea as having this wrapper open. Clean up my mess real quick. So open glove technique is a little bit easier. You have to remember you're only sterile where the glove is. So your body is not sterile in your arms if it touches anything. How do you select your glove size? All you do is open it off onto a dry surface. Outside of this package is not sterile. I can touch anywhere on the outside. But once I open here, you wanna pay attention to the inside of the contents of the package. It gets tricky when you open these the first time, so you just practice, pull the edges, there's a tab on each side, so I open right, open left, and I tuck this little area right there and it kind of pops the glove out at me, okay? Next thing I do, when you're doing any kind of a sterile setup, hand hygiene, Avogard, let the Avogard dry. And this one is a little bit trickier because you can only touch this inside cuff part because the rest of me is not gonna be sterile. So I wanna touch right here at the very edge, I lift the glove up and step away so I don't contaminate myself. Then you just stick your hand in, wiggle it around, leave that cuff until you get your other glove on. <laughs> okay? Same thing here. What I'm doing is taking my two fingers, sliding it underneath like a hook. Everybody see that? Okay. And then find the hole, <coughs> wiggle your fingers a little, pull out and up, gloves are on. Here, I can readjust because I only touch down there, so I can touch this and bring my glove up higher. I'm sterile from here to here. I would go again. I had a barrier set up. I had opened my drape and my supplies. I'm gonna select my drape. Sometimes you wanna open it and prepare it over the sterile field just in case. Get it ready. Bring it across, obviously the arm would be prepped at this point. Set your drape down in position, and then select your supplies to finish off. 
Okay. And this was the open glove technique. Any questions? So yes. you said for art lines, you would typically do the open glove. For art lines, I, I have seen it, and I always say this doesn't mean it's everywhere, but I mostly see art lines done with open glove. Okay. And then central lines are definitely bedside, and they make you gown glove the whole deal. The idea with the central lines is you need a space that's on wheels that you can move around. Yeah. That's the best thing is selecting the right supplies when you do your setup. We're going to do closed glove. <laughs> you have to keep your elbows out and your arms in this area so above your waist they, if they drop down here you're not sterile anymore you have to stop what you're doing take your gown and gloves off arms stay like this i always say i have a belly ache once my gown is on now right now my, i don't have a gown on so i couldn't do this this is not acceptable because what i'm touching if i have a gown on Oh, I threw it away. Let's just try to pretend that this didn't happen. <laughs> Let's just pretend. Your gown itself is sterile, and when you're sterile to sterile, you absolutely can touch your skin, yeah. or I'm sorry, touch your, fold your arms. Just don't fold your arms in your armpit, because that's probably one of the grossest areas of the body. You know, it has all those germs. and So you'll see a lot of doctors walk around like this. This is the best way to stand if you're waiting for supplies, any help. You can't touch anything unless it's sterile. So just staying like this is acceptable. You're sterile from your fingertips to your elbow, fingertips to elbow. And there's an imaginary line from here down to your pubis. Okay? Yes. So the reasoning for that, if you're not actually touching anything, if it goes below that, the you're pubis contaminated. Area. And it lets others in the healthcare field visually know. I can't, you can't touch something that's sterile because you're contaminated. So if I'm in a room and I still have a gown on, my arms drop, it's kind of like a universal sign for us. We know that you're not sterile anymore. This tells me I haven't broken sterility and I can touch sterile items. Yes. Why is it less sterile down here than right here? Because we work in a box. You can only see in your periphery. You can only see. So if my hands go up here, I can't see them. I cannot prove that they're sterile. I can't see my hands right here. But if you work in a box, this right here is your sterile zone. And I can visually see my, my zone. And that's how we teach for our team is they work in this really small box just so they can prove I am not contaminated. Any other questions? Okay. Who wants to practice?